Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we are on day 75. I'm so glad you're here and I hope you're having a great day today. We are going to be reading out of Exodus chapter 25, Proverbs chapter 7, Acts chapter 16, and then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 51 verses 10 through 19. So let's get started with Exodus chapter 25. I did a little bit of a pre-read on it and um, we are listening to uh, how God wanted them to build the tabernacle. And it is, it is a little long if you just kind of, you know, read through it, blah, 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 this is what he wants. But if we really pay attention to the details of his creativity, Wow, it's mind-blowing and beautiful. So let's get started. Maybe you'll see what I'm talking about. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they take an offering for me. From everyone whose heart made him, makes him willing, you shall take my offering. This is the offering which you shall take from them. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, rams, uh, rams skins dyed red, sea cow hides, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you, the patterns of the tabernacle and the pattern of all of its furniture, even so you shall make it. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. Its length shall be two and a half cubits, its width a cubit and a half, and a cubit and a half its height. You shall overlay it with pure gold. You shall overlay it inside and outside, and you shall make a gold molding around it. You shall cast four rings of gold for it and put them in its four feet. Two rings shall be on one side of it and two rings on the other side of it. You shall make poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You shall put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark. The poles shall be in the rings of the ark. They shall not be taken from it. You shall put the covenant which I shall give you into the ark. You shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. You shall make two cherubim of hammered gold. You shall make them at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at the one end and one cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim on its two ends of one piece with the mercy seat. The cherubim shall spread out their wings upward, covering the mercy seat with their wings with their faces toward one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat. You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the covenant that I will give you. There I will meet with you. I will tell you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are on the ark of the covenant, all that I command you, for the children of Israel. You shall make a table of acacia wood. Its length shall be two cubits, and its width a cubit, and its height one and a half cubits. You shall overlay it with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. You shall make a rim of a hand width around it. You shall make a golden molding on its rim around it. You shall make four rings of gold for it 
and put the rings in the four corners that are on its four feet. The rings shall be close to the rim, four places, uh, four places for the poles to carry the table. You shall make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and the table may be carried with them. You shall make its dishes, its spoons, its ladles, and its bowls with which to pour out offerings. You shall make them of pure gold. You shall set bread at the presence on the table before me always. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be made of hammered work, its base, its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. There shall be six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of its one side, and three branches of the lampstand out of its other side, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a bud and a flower, and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a bud and a flower. So for the six branches going out of the lampstand, and in the lampstand four cups made like almond blossoms, its buds and its flowers, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it, and a bud under two branches of one piece with it for the six branches going out of the lampstand. Their buds and their branches shall be of one piece with it, all of it one beaten work of pure gold. You shall make its lamps seven, and they shall light its lamps to give light to the space in front of it. It snuffers and its snuff dishes shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold uh, with all these accessories. See that you make them after their pattern, which has been shown to you on the mountain. Oh, my goodness, how beautiful. And this is from God. This is God's creativity. This isn't the people of Israel trying to design something beautiful for them to look at. This is God saying, this is what I want it to look like. These are the measurements. These are the uh, stones and the minerals. Oh, he is just so detailed and so perfect in everything he creates. So Proverbs chapter 7. There you are. All right, here we go. My son, keep my words. Lay up my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. Guard my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Tell wisdom, you're my sister. Call understanding your relative, that they may keep you from the strange woman, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. For at the window of my house I looked out through my lattice. I saw among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding, passing through the street near her corner. He went the way of her house, in the twilight, in the evening of the day, in the middle of the night, and in the darkness. Behold, there was a woman, uh, behold, there a woman met him with the attire of a prostitute and with crafty intent. She is loud and defiant. Her feet don't stay in her house. Now she is in the streets, now in the squares, and lurking at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. With an impudent, impudent face, 
She said to him, Sacrifices of peace offerings are with me. Today I have paid my vows. Therefore, I came out to meet you, to diligently seek your face, and I have found you. I have spread my couch with carpets of tapestry and striped cloths from the yarn of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let's take our fill of loving until the morning. Let's solace ourselves with loving. For my husband isn't at home. He has gone on a long journey. He has taken a bag of money with him, and he will come home at the full moon. With persuasive words, she led him astray. With the flattering of her lips, she seduced him. He followed her immediately as an ox goes to the slaughter, as a fool stepping into a noose, until an arrow strikes through his liver as a bird hurries to the snare and doesn't know that it will cost his life. Now therefore, sons, listen to me. Pay attention to the words of my mouth. Don't let your heart turn to her ways. Don't go astray in her paths, for she has thrown down many wounded. Yes, all her slain are a mighty army. Her house is the way to Shoal, going down to the rooms of death. Acts chapter 16. Hold on one second. Thank you very much. Here we go. Acts chapter 16. He came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewess who believed, but his father was a Greek. The brothers who were at Lystra and Iconium gave a good testimony about him. Paul wanted to have him go out with him, and he took and, uh, and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered the decrees to them to keep which had been ordained by the apostles and elders who were at Jerusalem. So the assemblies were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. When they had gone through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit didn't allow them. Passing by Mysia, they came down to Troas. A vision appeared to Paul that night. There was a man of Macedonia standing, begging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go out to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the good news to them. Setting sail, therefore, from Troas, we made a straight course to Samothrace, and uh, the day following to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a city of Macedonia, the foremost of the district, a Roman colony. We were staying some days in this city. On the Sabbath day, we went outside of the city by a riverside where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the women who had come together. A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatria, one who worshipped God, heard us. The Lord opened her heart to listen to the things which were spoken by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and stay. 
so she persuaded us. As we were going to prayer, a certain girl having a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much gain by fortune-telling. Following Paul and us, she cried out, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us a way of salvation. She was doing this for many days. But Paul, becoming greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. It came out that very hour. But when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. When they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men, being Jews, are agitating our city and advocate customs, which is, it is not lawful for us to accept or observe, being Romans. The multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates tore their clothes from them, then commanded them to be beaten with rods. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into the prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Having received such a command, he threw them into the inner prison and secured their feet in stocks. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were loosened. The jailer, being roused out of sleep and seeing the prison doors open, drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Don't harm yourself, for we are all here. He called for lights, sprang in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was immediately baptized, he and all his household. He brought them up into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly with all his household, having believed in God. But when it was day... The magistrates sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. The jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent mm. The jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore come out and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly without a trial. Men who are Roman and have cast us into prison. Do they now release us secretly? No, most certainly. But let them come themselves and bring us out. The sergeants reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and begged them. When they had brought them out, they asked them to depart from the city. They went out of the prison and entered into Lydia's house. When they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and then departed. Oh, Paul. Oh, I completely get it, Paul. So Psalm chapter 51 Verses 10 through 19. Here we are. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Don't throw me from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. Sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation. My tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips. My mouth will declare your praise. For you don't delight in sacrifice, or else I would give it. You have no pleasure in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. O God, you will not despise a broken and contrite heart. Do well in your good pleasure to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteousness, in burnt offerings, and in whole burnt offerings. Then they will offer bulls on your altar. Yeah. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. For when we are broken, we still open our hearts. And we still talk to Him. We still connect with Him. And somewhere in there, we are thankful. So, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and uh, listening to Day 75 today. I hope that you join me again tomorrow for Day 76. Until then, have a fantastic day, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.